Hello everybody and thanks for watching another episode of The Other 99. Today we're going to take a look at a graveyard based deck built by a viewer named Dakota M that features Glissa the Traitor as the general. Let's go ahead and take a look. Glissa is a 3-3 death touch and first strike zombie elf that recurs artifacts to your hand if you make your opponent's creatures bite the dust. It's a great rattlesnake card and generally won't die in combat thanks to the death touch and first strike combo. This allows for us to go toe to toe with some really big creatures including creatures like Kozilek. Like any good green deck, ramp and mana fixing is important. Birds of Paradise. A fixer that lets us ramp into turn 2 Glissa. Elvish Harbinger. Elf tutoring and mana dork, all in a nice convenient package. Oracle of Moldaya. An elf that gives us the ability to ramp hard. Nurkana Revenant. A mana generator and when necessary, a giant beater. Yavamaya Elder. Ramps, fixes, and cantrips. Expedition Map. This is repeatable unlimited land search in the deck, and since the loss of Primeval Titan, this is the next best option for the deck. Horizon Spellbomb. Solemn Simulacrum, breakable at any time for the same converted mana cost to get the same effects. Golgari Signet. Just some mana fixing. Soul Ring. Hey, it's Soul Ring. It speeds up our game. Solemn Simulacrum. Green may have enough ramp, but the card draw makes this card invaluable, and the body lets us do things like search it with Fauna Shaman, or sacrifice it to Garuk Relentless. Cage Sun. Only the finest in artifact-based mana multiplication. It's worth the extra mana over Gauntlet of Power to make it one-sided in your favor. Liliana of the Dark Realms. If you're in big mana black, this chick means business. Ensuring a land drop every turn is no joke. Out of the four Planeswalkers in the deck, her ultimate is easily the most synergistic to our strategy, allowing your swamps to go on absolute overdrive. The tutors in the deck help to get the game plan rolling. And Tomb. A tutor that can grab anything and throw it in the yard. The fact that it's an instant means you'll be able to grab a silver bullet right when you need it. Buried Alive. Tutor up three creatures and put them in the yard. Great for recurring artifact dudes or setting up a predator's council. Diabolic Intent. Sacrificing a creature to search for something is not an additional cost. It's actually a reward in this deck. Vampiric Tutor. One costing tutors are always great, and Vampiric Tutor is one of the best. Corpse Connoisseur. Two thirds of a buried alive on a stick? Sure, let's go with that. Demonic Tutor. The first, the original, and the best solid tutor. Fauna Shaman. Discard artifact dudes, tutor stuff up. Netherborn Phalanx. Absolutely murders token decks, but if that's not a problem for you, pitch him and tutor up a Titan, Micaeus, or a Cage Sun. Green Sun Zenith. A good way to tutor for Fauna Shaman in the early game, or Vorinclex in the late game. Gerard's Orders. This card is at its best fetching Gerard or Fauna Shaman into the hand, and Solemn Simulacrum or Worm Coil into the graveyard. Pretty much making this card a build your own engine in a can. Garuk Relentless. This guy is absolutely nuts if he sticks around to transform. His ability to fetch a utility artifact creature every other turn can swing games when you need to remove some artifact in your way. Diabolic Revelation. Though it technically is a tutor, this card can be a great win con. You can grab mana doublers, then expedition map if you haven't already got Cabal and Urborg up and running, then exsanguinate. Then you have to try and batten down the hatches because after those mana doublers come down, your opponents are going to try and kill you before you get another turn. If you live, you will probably win the game. This deck runs plenty of recursion other than just Glissa. Ink Eyes, Servant of Oni. Recursion that triggers after the blocker step can really do a lot of damage in the right situation. Genesis. A fine beater on his own, but his real purpose is to be pitched to the graveyard. Once he's there, he can retrieve any dude from the yard for an affordable 3 mana. Micaeus the Unhallowed. While he was okay when he was alive, Micaeus' undead version gives an anthem effect and undying to every creature in the deck, save Kamal. Shieldred, Whispering One. Shieldred has a very nice swamp walk ability, along with a sweet abyss-like creature kill effect. She recurs your stuff, too. This deck does a pretty good job drawing cards for it not to have blue as one of its colors. Harvester of Souls. Adding a cantrip to any dead guy seems wicked good. Expect this guy to eat removal once everyone realizes how incredibly busted he can be. Soul of the Harvest allows draw off both casting and entering the battlefield from other places, like Genesis Wave and Reanimation. Primordial Sage. A nice body and a cantrip stuck to every creature you cast. Moriok Replica. Repeatable card draw. Sensei's Divining Top. Thanks to Glissa, Crows and Grip is a threat to this no more. Garuk Primal Hunter. A gift from M12 that this deck just loves. 
He spits out free dudes, can draw huge amounts of cards from Praetors or a boosted Glissa, and if his ultimate goes off, it's game over. This deck uses quite a bit of spot removal and mass removal to keep triggering Glissa's ability. Executioner's Capsule. Repeatable creature removal, but limited to non-black stuff. It's cheap and cycles into your hand upon resolution if Glissa's out making it useful for trading with other artifacts in the graveyard. Silvok Replica. Repeatable artifact and enchantment removal. Beast Within. Permanent removal. At instant speed. And the only drawback is a 3-3 that just gives Glissa another trigger. Oh heck yes. Putrefy. Removal on any creature or artifact? Sure, it works. Maelstrom Pulse. This card is just plain good. Erasing any pesky planeswalker or artifact lock we may find ourselves in. Grave Pact. If your stuff starts to die, so does theirs. Artifact dudes that sack themselves allow you to control the board. Duplicant. Repeatable, unconditional, exiling removal. Also searchable via Netherborn Phalanx. Triangle of War. A fixed arena on a repeatable artifact. Karn Liberated. Besides fitting the Phyrexia theme, he exiles permanents. Focus on getting Karn to a high loyalty before attempting to resolve his ultimate, so you can exile some choice permanents from the board. Black Sun Zenith. Damnation is good, but this card keeps cards like Blightsteel Colossus from being a blight to your existence. Decree of Pain. One of the best wraths in the format, clearing the board and restocking your hand. This gets stupid with Harvester of Souls on board. Plaguewind. Wrath of God on your foes only. Nevin Yarl's Disc. Absolutely a house in this deck. Assuming it doesn't get exiled, we have a recurrable reset button should things get out of hand. Oblivion Stone. Disc Part 2. Later in the game, we can detonate the stone immediately and might save a permanent or two. And now for some graveyard hate and a couple other cards. Nihil Spellbomb. Let's us remove other graveyards and draw. Bajukabog. Kill switch for other graveyard strategies. Lurking Predators. A green staple and it's easy to see why. Let's us speed dudes to the fight. Predators Council. Recurs everything in the graveyard to give it a second go. It's a great feeling to resolve both Plague Wind and Genesis Wave twice in the same game. The deck's equipment help out our Glissa game plan. Darksteel Plate. Indestructible equipment that makes the wearer indestructible as well. Lightning Greaves. Shroud and Haste, all in a nice, convenient package. Nemesis Mask. Lure on an equipment. It lets Glissa kill three creatures that can't be targeted, or more with pumps. Thornbite Staff. If Glissa was Rambo, this would be her machine gun. When equipped, it gives her Pay 2, Destroy Target Creature. This deck doesn't need its general to win with all of these win cons. Grave Titan. He's big, he's mean, he's a token machine. Death Touch on a stronger body as well. Gerard Golgari Lichlord. Gerard's an engine, sack outlet, and beater all in one. Heck, he can recur himself if he needs to. Phyrexian Obliterator. A 4 drop with flavor and 5-5 five five Trampler. And it does obscene things to permanents. Foreignclex Voice of Hunger. Say hello to Ramp Unleashed. Because he locks your opponents down, expect him to eat removal frequently. Wormcoil Engine. This artifact titan of Phyrexia gives your forces some serious firepower, and having great synergy with Glissa to spit out tokens with lifelink and death touch. Grave Betrayal. This enchantment is just plain out great in this deck. Tutor up Plague Wind for an immediate win condition. Exsanguinate. Even if this doesn't kill everybody in one shot, this will usually leave you with a big enough life buffer to pick off what little life your foes have left. Genesis Wave. Arguably green's best card in EDH, resolving this at anything higher than 15 can easily end the game. And finally, the deck lands. Urborg. That's right, before it was a Tomb of Yawgmoth, this parcel of a land took away First Strike and Swamp Walk. This makes Glissa unstoppable to any non-indestructible assault on her, and the Swamp Walk removal is a nice bonus. Cabal Coffers. The Black Mana Superland. Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth. A mono black staple. Coffers in this card are busted. Next we have Valreth Stronghold, Command Tower, Forbidden Orchard, Giltleaf Palace, Golgari Rot Farm, Marsh Flats, Misty Rainforest, Overgrown Tomb, Strip Mine, Tainted Wood, Tectonic Edge, Verdant Catacombs, Vesuva, Yavamaya Hollow, Seven Forests, and Eight Swamps. And now for the strengths and weaknesses of the deck. Its strengths. The deck is extremely reliable at color fixing to allow your mana to be flexible. This deck is at no lack of big, game-swinging creatures. This deck has great Timmy appeal. 
The deck has a small New Phyrexia theme using stuff from both Mirrodin and New Phyrexia. The deck does not require its commander to stay alive. And its weaknesses. Dumping the graveyard will make you a sad panda. Commanders like Rafik and Stonebrow give this deck some problems, particularly without Glissa. Exiling permanents is a major problem, especially the artifacts. Return to Dust and Dissipate can really screw stuff up for you. You should play this deck if you like playing with artifacts, you like big swingy spells, you like recursive strategies, you like having answers to problems, you like to say Genesis Wave for 20. Thanks for watching this episode of The Other 99. This deck does a great job of taking advantage of Glissa's triggered ability, but not depending too much on it. For next time, vote on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube for either Thrun the Last Troll, Kalia of the Vast, or Intet the Dreamer. Also, you can have a chance to win a Commander's Arsenal Mind's Eye or Decree of Pain by just liking us on Facebook or following us on Twitter. Once we get to 200 likes on Facebook, we will send a lucky fan a Commander's Arsenal Mind's Eye. At 150 followers on Twitter, we'll send a lucky fan the Commander's Arsenal Decree of Pain. Good luck, everybody! This is Karsten with Top Go Productions, and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>